So, frame rate. Frame rate is something incredibly important for all animators out there and is as important as knowing how long does your animation take for you to perform the action that you want to do. Now, if you animate on the wrong frame rate, uh, your animations are going to be either sped up or too slow. And uh, I know that I've made that mistake as an animator, as a young animator, that I spend hours upon hours working on an animation just to find out that it was made on the wrong frame rate and I had to redo the whole thing yet again because the wrong frame rate was set from the very beginning. It hurts, it's not nice, and I'm here to talk to you guys about what frame rate do we animate in games. So, without further ado, let's get started with this episode. All right, welcome to another video, guys. I hope you guys had a great week. My name is Harvey Newman, for those that don't know me. I have been in game development for over 18 years now, all in all, and I love, absolutely love making games. And I've been an animator for the most part, most recently an animation director. And I like to use this channel here in YouTube um, to share my passion for animation and game development, and hopefully share a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes with you all, so you're better prepared for when you get into the industry, or if you're just curious about what goes on behind the scenes. Now, in this episode, obviously, we're going to talk about frame rate. But before I get started, I would like to tell you guys that um, I have an animation mentorship for all those that are interested in knowing more about animation or want a help in hand. Make sure you check it out, animation.harveynewman.com. And also, we have just crossed the 500 members on Discord. Thank you so much to everybody that has joined me on Discord. Our server is getting super, super uh, interesting. Lots of chat, lots of interesting conversations, lots of knowledge being shared. And thank you so much for everybody that has been involved, especially Adam, my administrator. He's been doing an amazing job and also my mods. Thank you so much for the help. And if you would like to actually kind of like join us on the conversation and share your work and know more about animation and plugins and what kind of solutions there is for Maya or any issues that you have, then join us. There's a link down below that you can click to join us on Discord. So make sure to join us and I'll see you guys there. Now, let's get started with this episode. So, frame rate. As I mentioned in the beginning, frame rate is incredibly um, daunting. And if you actually are using the wrong frame rate for any project you use, then you are going to be 100% in a bad box for your lead or director or supervisor or whoever is kind of like dealing with you because it's such a basic mistake to make. And most animators that actually find themselves animating on the wrong frame rate feel quite embarrassed. Now, frame rate depends on what medium you're working on. So if you're working in film at this point in time, most likely you don't have to worry so much about it because most films are made on 24 frames per second. Maya by default, when you actually boot up Maya, in your animations is also already set by default at 24 frames per second. So you're good to go. You probably never have to think about this because it doesn't matter what Maya you use, it's just good out the box. So it's all good. However, in games, things become a bit more complicated. And I had a few people asking me exactly about this because it can be confusing because there is no such thing as like a guide out there about all games are made in this frame rate because uh, things as always are more complicated than you think. And I feel like I say this in every single video that I talk about the games industry, but you know, it's a young industry. So we all trying to figure out exactly how to do it. And I can share with you guys my experience because there is no such thing as like a set way of doing it. But in my experience, here's how it works. When you actually get in the studio and you actually start animating as a young animator, definitely a good idea for you to ask, well, what frame rate should I set my Maya up? Because your Maya is gonna be vanilla, you're probably going to have 24 frames per second, so you need to ask your lead, do I have to set my Maya at a specific frame rate? Now, 24 frames per second is definitely not gonna be the one that you're gonna use for games. The one that you're gonna use for games is either gonna be 30 or 60 frames per second. Now, 30 is more popular, but 60, there's a few studios out there that do it at 60. Now, why 30 and why 60? And reason being, to actually say it in the shortest way possible, engine, right? 
when you actually are animating in Maya in order to export your animations to engine, the engines, all engines out there run at least at 60 frames per second, right? So you need to actually make sure that your animations hit that threshold because the engine, what it does, is actually clamp your animations to make sure that they run consistently at the same frames per second and the engine sees them as 60 frames per second in order to make them smooth and all that stuff. Now, it might be confusing for you to think that you animate in Maya 30, for example, most in most studios, and then you see it in game at 60. But in reality is that whenever you actually get into engine, in certain engines, depending on the engine, expect the animation to be at 30 because they need to add frames in between in order to actually kind of interpolate your animation. This can lead to all kinds of problems, but also most engines have found ways around this issue. Now, for most animations that are not fast-paced, this is not a problem. Uh, when you animate at 30 frames, you export your animations, you ingest it into engine. Um, normally there is things, if, especially if it's an engine that is really well put together, like Unreal or uh, Unity, there is ways for you to actually make sure that whenever it gets ingested and it gets to turn into 60 frames per second, it looks pretty much one-to-one -one with no problems. However, I have worked in engines before that when you actually export your animation on 30 frames per second and then it gets ingested and it goes into 60, that interpolation on very, very fast moving objects, sometimes you actually get to see either strobing or like in between frames that are like weirdly interpolated and things like that. But either way, if you find this issue, that is definitely something that you have to take upon your leads, your supervisors, and they need to take it upon the coders and people that are actually are dealing with the engine behind the scenes because uh, those cases are rare and most of the time it kind of works well. So 30 and 60 is what you're looking for when you are working in games for your animations. Now, the few studios that I worked in that actually animated at 60 is absolutely perfect and I really feel like this is the future of all animations in games. Because what happens is that when you animate in Maya at 60 and you can export it and then you import it into engine it's already at 60, things become much smoother and much nicer and you can actually push the animations or not depending on what you're doing because uh, sometimes what happens when you animate at 30 and import it at 60 uh, your animations even though it's not perceptible but for the animator that made it because you spend so much time seeing it at 30 it feels slightly smoother right and uh, you kind of just you know with the experience you kind of just shut that part of the brain down and you're like okay this is just the engine interpolating my animation and it looks smoother and it's nicer and it's all good but from time to time it feels very much like your animation at 30 worked much better than now at 60. So whenever you have a match between your Maya and your engine and they are both exactly at the same rate, it works much better because if you actually want to push uh, animation or you want to have held frames for a little longer or anything of that sort, when you do it in Maya, you know that you're going to get exactly the same result in engine and I think that is much better for the animators out there. Now that is the minority of studios out there, unfortunately, but just know that you as an animator have to get used to working on one or the other, um, and either of them is going to give you really good results in engine, and it should be one of the things that you set and forget. Just remember that you have to ask before you get started in your Maya, because otherwise you're going to look um, a little bit unprofessional whenever you actually have to redo the animation. If it's at 24 frames per second, then you have to redo it again at 30. It's not a nice feeling, I don't like it, and I hope this video helps you guys to not make that mistake like I did many times previous. That's all I had for you guys. Now, if this video was actually of use to you, then consider subscribing down below and hit the bell button so you don't miss any more content like this that might be useful to you. And then if you know anybody that actually would like to actually know more stuff about game dev or animation, then feel free to kind of like, you know, send them a link to this channel, hopefully spread the word, tell a friend to tell a friend, all that goodness. I cannot go away without mentoring my Patreons. Thank you so much to everybody that has been supporting me over the months or for my YouTube channel, all the money that that I get in my Patreon goes to this channel. I have a new tier now that is even more supportive of this channel. And then I have things like meeting up uh, once a month, giving away stickers for my Patreons, the thanks, and many more stuff. So once again, there's a link down below that you can check out um, some of the stuff that I do on my Patreon. And that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys have a good week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.